All right, so I wanted to share with you guys and gals out there, or our koi pond. The way that you see it right now, it's setting at three and a half years old. It's gone through a somewhat of an evolutionary process where we've made changes and, and now have it finally in a state where it uh, is very self-sufficient in regards to uh, water clarification and uh, supports. To my guess, we've not counted, I'd say probably eight feeder fish which uh, matured into large goldfish, probably 15 or more koi, many of which have been born in the pond and have, uh, like you'll see that yellow one right there, and one over here, that yellow one right in the center, he was born in the pond, and a few of his brothers and sisters were born in here and have matured. And along with that, we've got maybe a dozen or, or more just little lake minnows and uh, put a few large adult tilapia in here and they've since spawned and uh, we've moved about 200 of the spawn tilapia into a, uh, a, a large tote and uh, there are probably 50 or 60 ranging from an inch to three or four inches in there cohabitating with the uh, koi. Now this is 16 foot in length nine and a half feet in width and just under two foot in depth. Now why we chose the two foot in depth is that here in Florida you don't need a building permit for any body of water that you construct that is under two foot in depth. So that's why we went with that. Plus uh, originally our intention was to have this covered uh, in a shade cloth type material. This is a 90 percent blocking shade cloth material with just a uh, two by six structure and galvanized uh, timber hardware to provide the support for the uh, shade cloth. Got, uh, it's all built out of four by eight by 16 concrete block. Concrete blocks are filled with concrete and uh, no rebar used. Now the bottom of the pond is concrete. We had a concrete truck come out, pour us five yards of concrete. I'd formed that up. I'll show you in some of the uh, pictures uh, later how that looked. Waterfall is connected in. It's all built in to the wall structure so that it's uh, bound to that real nice. The uh, filter area, I kind of designed that with the idea of how you might have a filter uh, on a fish tank. It's a settlement chamber in a sense that the water enters in at the bottom over here. Um, this area from about from about here down about six inches is matillamat, which in, in three different densities, a coarse, a medium, and a fine density. And it's all supported by uh, a grid-like material on the bottom and the top. The filter material is finished off on the top with reticulated foam to catch the finest of the material that uh, would be in the water. And then it's supported with just with a couple of concrete blocks just to sandwich in that uh, material filter in between. Then it uh, cascades over. These are just uh, concrete. You'll see, obviously, just bacteria and algae growing on there. I take and shut this off about once a month, spray it with just regular household bleach, cleans all that off to just perfect white bare concrete, and in about two months it'll it'll look like you see here. Uh, it does very well. <clears throat> the settles, the water settles down into this vat. I have a drain that I just dra I'll drain as I'm cleaning those filters. I'll pull them out, lay them on the ground, hit them with a, a blast of just some water from the hose keeping them all wet. Uh, a residual amount of bacteria is always remaining on that as well as in the pond. Bacteria on the, on the uh, you know, the beneficial bacteria on the pond walls and pond bottom on all the fittings. Anywhere that, uh, that water stays exposed uh, to a surface you're going to have bacteria growth that's going to aid in uh, turning that water over and uh, removing any uh, harmful remnants. Now I've got a real simple filtration setup. 
I've got a uh, pump that produces uh, 4,500 gallons per hour flow rate. And uh, you'll see at the bottom here, water, yeah, I'll show you this in pictures uh, in this video. The water is drawn from two bottom drains on the pond. The bottom drains are not anything spectacular, they're just simple uh, four inch PVC fittings connected to two inch and uh, there's one on each end of the pond on the far end where you'll see that skimmer which is just a simple four inch pipe connected to the bottom drain and on this other end about a foot from this into the pond there's a bottom drain with just a simple filter type uh, strainer device very simple just plugs right in and uh, to clean it you just shut the pond off the water flows out of the filtration settlement tank here rinses anything that might be large that may be stuck to it off now very simple water comes in from the bottom is drawn into the pump at this point it exits the pump and this particular exit sends it straight in under the filter material where the water has a couple of feet to settle swirl about and it swirls rather gently and then rises up through the filter material and exits back into the pond this other one obviously water coming from the pump do another method and here it continues ha I have an option to continue back into the pond simply to recirculate with no filtration um, these holes in the block were cut in the block the pipe was inserted and I mortared around that after the mortar set for several hours I just ground it smooth with a concrete block after cured I stuccoed all this with just a sand stucco you'll see some uh, what appears to be a crack right here that's just paint separation as paint is cured and some settling has occurred uh, again this pipe this this uh, water coming from the pump filtration passing under the filters through and then back into the pond this one here allows me to turn this on and water will flow down into the bottom of this UV sterilizer up now there, that cup on there just to keep that out of the out of the weather that's just uh, the transformer power supply for this UV filtration it's all rigidly mounted you can hear that uh, quartz sleeve in there so very rigidly mounted this is just a piece of paper towel in there just keep that out of the weather, weather and keep the moisture off and then I've got it regulated by sending it it's got two inches in and then I've got three quarter out that's going to allow some dwell time in that UV clarifier so that the water is not moving through too fast and the uh, UV light can have its effect on there I simply drilled this out and siliconed it through this four inch flock uh, both inside and out so no leaks there got a simple uh, ground fault receptacle down here and this is just a piece of uh, galvanized roof flash and silicone on the top to provide just like a hinge just to keep that uh, out of the weather just a bit very simple construction and then the plug for the UV clarifier <clears throat> so it makes for a very simple setup where you're not getting into a lot of complex um, contraptions. I'm going to call them contraptions where you've got pipe running all over, pipe exposed, pipe you've got to trip over. It's just ugly. It, it, it takes away from it, detracts from the look of a pond when you've just got pipe and rubber pond liner everywhere. Now, <clears throat> initially, I bought um, it's a rubberizer product, and you'll see that this, this black painted on the block was that rubberizer product and it looked extremely impressive when it was new now this is its third and a half year and that material gets a calcium build up on it just different uh, elements in the water that dry um, and so it, it doesn't look as impressive um, we did do the entire pond I'll show you some pictures of that you can see it everywhere we did this entire vat did the entire pond and it's impressive in the sense that it looks really great. It goes on a thickness of about uh, a credit card once you've applied a couple of coats. But we discovered after about approaching about a year that that rubberized coating began to flake, began to bubble. Um, it went on properly, put one coat on, 
waited a week for it to cure, put on a second coat. And the second coat, it, it seemed the areas where it overlapped initially during your application didn't cure properly. It, it never dried per perfectly black. It always had a, a brownish appearance and it just never seemed that it cured properly. But after some time, after approaching about a year, uh, pieces were bubbling off, flaking off, and as a result we drained our pond and pressure washed it completely off. Um, however, even before that was applied, uh, the inside of the pond as well as the outside was stuccoed with a sand coat. Uh, and this inside is only the stucco with the sand coat. And you can see now that the bottom of the pond and the walls of the pond, I don't know how well you'll see that, have all just uh, accumulated a, uh, an algae growth that uh, is going to happen anyway that's going to provide uh, uh, minimal filtration benefits as well as darkening the walls of the pond that the dark uh, effect is going to enhance and in effect brighten the fish so the darker the pond the, the structures of the pond the brighter your fish will appear I mean if you have the fish against a, a white background you might not see see them as detailed but everything's doing quite well and uh, I'll show you at the end of this video some of the uh, building aspects. We had lots of projects going on. We bought this home as a foreclosure and uh, it was just a stark desert. We had fencing projects going on, painting projects, landscaping projects, uh, built a deck, all of this, all these going on at the same time. Um, and now we're three and a half years into it. Fall's approaching so we've got uh, all these trees that we planted uh, starting to lose some of their leaves and uh, well, hope this has been a help. You know, a pond doesn't have to be complex or technical. Usually what, what's simple works the best. And this is all concrete and four and a half by eight, or four by eight by 16 inch concrete blocks or half blocks, uh, basically. And they're filled with concrete. Again, the bottom was poured, five yards of concrete. And we put your typical uh, wire in that. We didn't use any rebar anywhere but all the cells of all the blocks are filled with concrete straight to the top to provide some additional uh, strength. Now, we compacted the ground really well and made sure that uh, there was no voids. Compacted it, wetted it, compacted it, wetted it, and uh, immediately next morning poured, poured the concrete. I've seen one or two, not many, but one or two just hairline cracks in the stucco, uh, my assumption. See if you can see that. There's a little one right there. My assumption is it's only in the stucco and it's not in the block. And regardless of either, uh, there's no leaks. We top this off about twice a week by adding four or five gallons to it from water that evaporates. And that tile area will accumulate a uh, algae uh, in a you know, little bit down to where it splashes. And what I'll do is when I shut the pump off, I spray off that little spillway in those tiles just with household bleach. Uh, by the time you cons give consideration to that, I may be putting in a half a cup of bleach uh, directly on these surfaces. Bleach doesn't have much of a lifetime when exposed to the air and uh, sunlight, so there's never been any effect, any harmful effect on these fishes by doing that. And uh, well, let's get to the pictures and let you take a look at those. I'll try to provide some narration so you can understand um, our process when we purchased this barren backyard um, as a foreclosure and where we took it from where it was. So this is the property, the backyard, um, right after closing. You can see how ugly and barren this is. Um, very little vegetation. My assumption is it's what the builder left about five years ago when the home was built. Just absolutely horrible. We come from a home where we had a uh, koi pond, nice oak trees. You can see in the garage where the previous owners or whoever uh, stripped out the air conditioning and the uh, hot water heater and most of the appliances inside. So we had a new air conditioning again, fencing projects, decking projects. And in the backyard here, we kind of laid out a preliminary idea of what we might want to, areas we might want to excavate for a pond. All right, so you can see a, a view. We're starting to accumulate materials and uh, 
We've got ongoing projects, fencing, fence gates, whatnot. We've got a deck simultaneously being uh, built out in the backyard. We're trying to incorporate this in a way that the, the pond that we have planned for is going to fit in nicely and uh, be able to be usable in regards to its relation to the uh, pond. So we start uh, digging out, getting an idea of shape, keeping in consideration of the materials we're going to use and dimensions of blocks and, and whatnot. And we move all the dirt from our pond to some of the uh, low and high areas in the backyard. And you can see here, we've got the dugout and uh, somewhat formed up in preparation for concrete. Uh, laid my bottom drains, which are just four inch pipe. Um, we want to keep it simple and cost effective. And here's the routing of the pipe to the area where my uh, planned pump is going to be. And just another view of that same uh, scene right there. Okay, here you can see the wire that we had uh, that's going to provide a little bit of strength for the uh, concrete pour. Now that wire, we did raise it so that it wasn't set in on the ground, that it was suspended in the middle of the concrete. Uh, that's just going to provide a little strength. Again, no rebar anywhere. We didn't get fancy with our finish. We just screeded it off and floated it mildly here and there. We wanted a semi-rough bottom where we could have some algae forming. That's going to provide a little bit of beneficial uh, effect on the water. Uh, and here you see I'm placing block, getting an idea uh, of where I need to make cut and uh, leveling it. The end closest to the deck is about an inch and a half higher than the end where the filter is. So in the event you want to clean this guy out, water is going to run down to an area that's going to be used for a drain. And you see I've got two areas, one by the deck which is effectively used as a skimmer and then another closer to the filter vat submachine that will allow a water or bulk water flow in for filtration. The concrete blocks you see in the bottom of that are just used as a bulk filler. Uh, I poured concrete over that as you'll see here. Just saved a little bit on concrete. And here you see we're working on our second course making a little bit of progress in the hot Florida sun. Alright here you see I've got my second course going and it's a slow process. We tried to get a coat up uh, course up every day. Here I've poured the uh, area that my pump and hardware is going to set on uh, with its uh, run routing uh, conduit and getting our uh, ground fault receptacles installed. And you can see I'm going to bear it down there and it's going to run up the wall into uh, a gang box in the attic. Here I've got my pump in place, just dry fitting, making sure everything's going to work as intended. We originally uh, planned on having an ultraviolet uh, clarifier installed. Didn't have it at the time, but we made, made sure that I could uh, fit that in once we'd gotten that. Here you'll see the cuts through the blocks, just a dry fit so that we can make sure that the pipe's going to work in the way that I intended and get that uh, mortared in later. Again, just another view, the same scenario, just verifying, checking everything, making sure it's going to work as intended. And then here we've got it uh, set up and connected, everything glued together and uh, mortared into place. So we went to Lowe's, picked out a, a glass tile that we're going to use on our waterfall area. And here you'll see I've got that in place. Uh, it just worked out that the 12 inch sheets worked perfectly, grouted that in, and uh, then began working on getting it nice and dry for the next process, which is where we're going to begin installing the rubberizer, which is just a rubber coating that's going to allow for uh, more waterproofing. Uh, the pond at this point has already been uh, stuccoed with a, a, a sand effect and here you can see the rubberized coating going on. This is the first coat of two. Looks great, looks real impressive, but unfortunately for us after about a year it started to fail and we just pressure washed it all right off of there. And here you'll see the matilla mat that we used. We used three different densities, a fine, a medium, and a coarse. Coarse being on the bottom, mediums in the middle, and the fine on the top to progressively filter water as it flows up through. These are the polypropylene, uh, I always expect that that's what they're called. Uh, we used four of these, two on the bottom, two on the top, sitting on a uh, just a basic PVC type rack and sandwiched that filter material between those. These are very rigid and uh, very durable. There's just a basic table frame set up that's in the vat where the, all that filter material is set on. And here's just a simple drain that is on the, uh, the outlet closest to the waterfall that just uh, where the bulk of the water is drawn through and to prevent any fish or large debris from entering the pump. 
Here's uh, once the uh, rubberized material was completed. Looks very impressive again. Unfortunately, after about a year, it started flaking and bubbling, and uh, you could see pieces of it floating in the water, and we just didn't want that. We got off the pressure right washer and just blew it right all off of there. And so we let this dry, and it was morning, and it was evening, and it was the fifth day. What a great way to end a hot day in the Florida sun. So the following morning, we filled it with water and uh, let that circulate for a day or so just to get any uh, chlorine out. That chlorine city water will dissipate rather quickly once exposed to the air in the sun and just some general movement. And uh, we had our fish from our previous pond in a pool on our deck. We introduced them to the water. Didn't have any loss. About a month later, we did lose one a jumper. One of those goldfish jumped out, and we lost it. Now, this is a few months later, more towards the fall. The water's turning green as expected. Sitting out in the sun like that, there's just no way to avoid it. Um, shade uh, is going to be your best friend, and uh, a UV clarifier, obviously, is going to work the best. And so we continued on with completing other projects, starting new ones. So we had other projects going. We uh, did a little landscaping, planted a garden, planted some trees, planted trees around the pond, up on our hill. There's an interesting piece of driftwood we found in a local lake here. Brought that home, planted a few little spider plants and uh, decorated a little bit. And now uh, we're looking at about a year later, or the following year. We uh, bought and planted lily pads and uh, they, they did really well. The fish love to tear them up, so you'll have all kind of parts of lily pads and <clears throat> leaves and de plant debris in your water. Uh, ultimately, remo we remove those. You can see even with a good amount of uh, shadow being provided by the lily pads, you still have green water. However, from time to time, the pond would clear up completely on its own, be nice and clear, but ultimately, uh, in that Florida sun, it's gonna have its way, and always ended up after a couple of weeks of uh, nice clear water it would uh, go back to uh, the p typical pea green soup and in this next picture you'll see the water was nice you could see all the way to the bottom and uh, fish and water quality was great uh, ammonia levels were practically non-existent and here's just another view of that same scene And you can see here that uh, our landscaping is coming along. This is about a year and a half later. Things are just progressing nicely. And uh, I'll show you more in this next scene. Okay, so we're about at two and a half years now. And uh, working on a little retaining wall on the deck. It's on a sloped hill, so we want to make sure that that's not going to be affected by uh, water setting up against it or wet soil. Keep that from rotting, so I'll put together a landscape timber. Uh, retained wall. And here I'm beginning the uh, shade cloth structure, which is just a uh, 2x6 pressure treated material with galvanized uh, uh, lumber hardware with a 90% uh, uh, sunblock uh, shade cloth. And uh, it's providing a lot of shade. It makes it a lot nicer out there. Keeps the uh, sun off the water, keeps the water temperature down. And uh, as we continued with this, we extended it over our patio. And that makes it a lot more tolerable to be able to sit out there in the sun and uh, stay cool. And so the landscape's maturing. We're getting plants. The vines are taking effect as we intended. And things are just coming along nicely. Again, sitting at about uh, maybe two and a half years, approaching three years. This was last year, and right now it's the uh, summer 2014. So things are taking shape, looking nice. Plants are starting to mature. The lawn's coming along well. Uh, we're happy with this. And uh, here shortly, uh, about six months from this particular scene is where we install our UV clarifier to uh, once and for all have clear water. Okay, so here is about three months ago. Uh, you see again the water's cleared up on its own for no particular reason. It's got a little bit of shade provided by the shade cloth and a little bit by the vegetation. But uh, the water does clear up and it does return back to uh, uh, green, green in color. Our landscape is 
pretty progressing. We're happy with the pond. We haven't had any fish lost, and uh, we're not really all that concerned with our load of fish. It, uh, ammonia levels are practically non-existent. Landscape's coming along well. Our, we've ordered a UV clarifier, and it was very easy install. It was a Pondmaster 40 watt um, UV clarifier, and it installed very easily. Uh, we ran it for two days. The water was pea green. We ran it for two days. It was uh, crystal clear. This is the, the day we installed the pond filter, uh, just a few days ago at this point. And um, that water clarified in two days. And so our plan is if we see it turning green again, we'll just turn it on for another couple of days and uh, with those expectations have crystal clear water. Now I hope this helped you guys give you some consideration on pond building. This might not be the pond for everybody. Some will want a more natural look that's at ground level with stones and cascading uh, trickling waterfalls and of that nature. But we, we wanted this based on the type of terrain we have here in Florida with a slope. We still wanted to have some yard. Uh, didn't have easy accessibility to uh, you know stonework that we could use and that was affordable. So we went this way. I'd say we have about $1,800 in this pond. It has a volume of about 2,000 gallons. Uh, we use a uh, pump that flows 4,500 gallons per hour, a 40 watt UV sterilizer, and uh, at this point we're happily, happily content. Uh, we, we can expect that our water is going to stay crystal clear in the future by only running that UV uh, sterilizer a few days a month. So that UV clarifier was $200. It's available online. The replacement bulb uh, is $60 and has a life expectancy of 9,000 hours. So the manufacturer suggests this will last us a couple of years. So hope you enjoyed this and gives you something to think about. Bye-bye now.